So you have a TPT store, you're making some money by this point, and your to-do list is getting crazy long. It seems like every time you turn around, someone is telling you to do something else. And while you're trying to put your blinders on and focus, there's still a ton to do. So it makes sense. When we think of other businesses or companies, they're usually not just run by one person. There's usually whole teams and departments. There's a department for marketing, a department for sales, a department for product development, and a department for graphic design. If you feel like you're in a million different places and you feel like you're maybe stretched thin or spread thin, stretched out, whatever it is, it's okay, take a breath. You're gonna be okay. This was never meant to be done by just one person. Then you have a compounded problem. When you go to look around to start hiring out, maybe a VA or a social media manager or someone to work on your product photography, it seems like everybody's super expensive. I get that that can be super frustrating because you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You don't have all the time and energy or maybe the skill set to complete everything you need to do to make your store as successful as it could be but you don't have the money to outsource those things. So you don't have time. There's usually three currencies, right? There's time, there's money, and then there's skill. And usually with skill can come ways to automate and delegate and things like that. But if you don't have those skills yet, it can be so frustrating. And I get it. As someone who's a social media manager who does these kinds of services for people, not everybody is always ready to outsource for social media manager. In fact, I've worked with some people where I then gave them the advice of, you know what, work on your offers a little bit, focus on what you want to accomplish on social social media, get clear on your goals, um, and then you're welcome to come and we could work on one, on one together. Or maybe I'll refer them to a course I have or another program. So I get that, but sometimes it's hard to know where you are and sometimes it's hard to trust even people like me, VAs and freelancers, because you can feel like, well, they're, they're just there to make money. So I don't know if I can trust what they're going to say. Yes, I want to make sure that, you know, that I hear you. I totally get that. But there are other ways to outsource without hiring someone for hundreds or thousands a month. So let's start with that. What is outsourcing in business? Outsourcing is simply the act of having someone else do what you would do and paying them for it. So when you think about it, we outsource in our lives all the time. We pay someone to change the oil in our car, or we go to a car wash, or we get our hair cut. I'm definitely not cutting my own hair. I don't have the skill for that. Or maybe you go and buy clothes instead of sewing them yourself. So if you think about it, those are all ways that we are outsourcing daily things in our lives. In business, this could look like outsourcing, paying someone to do your logo. So it doesn't have to be a recurring thing. It could be a one-off project. It could be creating a template for a product line that you've been trying to get done, but you just haven't, and then paying somebody to finish the product line for you. So I'll give you an example. In my math store, I have this uh, math fact practice activity where I did uh, the, like the twos, the threes, and the fours, and I was getting sick of it. And I was like, I am not gonna sit here and do five through 12. I just can't do it. It's gonna drive me crazy. So I gave a template to a VA and they finished the rest of them. You can just imagine how happy I was to know I was paying to get that thing done, but then I could focus on the other fun products on my million idea list over here and therefore get more money into my store because I'm able to upload products at a faster rate than I would have had I not been doing that. Those are all perfectly great examples of outsourcing. You can outsource for a one-time project like a logo, you could do a one-time project like a product line, or you could do recurring for someone like me, like a social media manager where you pay me like $600 a month and I manage your accounts for you. But I get it, like if you're in the beginning, you're like, whoa, 600 a month, I can't even imagine that. Well, if someone's making several thousand a month, $600, while it's still an investment and still can kind of hurt a little bit when you're losing that much, you realize that, wow, I am buying so much of my time back and I don't have to think about it and my energy isn't going towards it, but that person is growing my email list for me, they're getting me leads, they're getting me sales. So you can see why it'd be beneficial because a business person, once they've gotten to that point, see $600 as getting maybe even $1,200 out of it, is a really, really good deal. So your mindset will change about money and time over time. But in the beginning, you're probably more willing to spend your time and spend your money because you're focused on money. And that's okay. Um, I totally understand. Or sometimes we just go through different phases, like maybe someone gets sick and you have a big hospital bill and all of a sudden your, your money is more important than your time. So you just get to pick. But outsourcing allows you to buy your time back. So let's talk about the difference between outsourcing and hiring, because that is one thing that 
uh, many TPT sellers get wrong, and I want to make sure you know because it has big legal ramifications. When you outsource, you're working with someone like me who's an independent contractor or freelancer. They have their own business. Usually, if it's a freelancer, they do this certain skill like social media management, blogging, podcast editing, stuff like that. Or you work with a more general virtual assistant who takes on tasks, just gets them done for you. Okay. So these are all independent contractors. You are not employing them. And this means that they get to choose when they work, how they work, the tools that they use, they get to choose all of that. And this is usually, it makes sense. If you have someone come and fix your toilet, for example, you're not really hiring them as an employee, right? You are hiring them in a way, but you're doing a specific task and they're doing it, getting it done for you. That's their business. Same thing with Uber. You are not their employer. You are simply hiring them to do a task. Once they perform the task, they're no longer working with you. So it's the same thing with a freelancer, except for this could be graphic design. This could be social media management. This could be launch strategy. It could be a myriad of things. You have to be so careful when you're working with independent contractors that the language and the job description and the posting, even on social media and then how you work with them is of an independent contractor and not an employee because the taxing scheme is completely different. If you do want to hire an employee, you might get to a point with your business where you're making lots of money, lucky you, um, and you get there since it's lucky you. Good for you, because you worked hard. <laughs> but when you get to that point, then you might want to hire a proper part-time or full-time employee because you want to have more control over how they work, how the work is performed, the quality, uh, when they work, and all that, okay? So when you're just starting out, you're probably going to be outsourcing, and it makes sense why you'd want to. It's more affordable, that person is more responsible for the taxes, and usually in the beginning, you just need a few tasks done anyway, you're not doing anything super major, um, so it's okay. And it's usually pretty painless to pay them. You can hire them on a platform like Fiverr or Upwork. I have all of those links down in the description below if you wanna learn more and possibly get signed up for those platforms. They are affiliate links, um, so I get a part of the, your what you pay at no extra cost to you. Um, but it's easy to pay them because you have like a broker, Upwork or Fiverr, for example, who holds the money and makes sure that they don't get paid if the work isn't performed and that you pay if the work is performed. They perform that transaction for you. Then if and when you do hire someone on retainer or for a bigger project, you can use platforms like PayPal or transfer wise, or you could even use it like a course platform if, if they have something set up in like Kajabi or member work where you would pay there. So yeah, there's, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. Um, and yeah, and that's kind of how it works. That's the difference between a, uh, contractor and employee. That's at least the rough difference. I'm not a lawyer. Um, but I do have a blog post where I go into this a little bit more. So I'll be sure to link that in the video description as well. And then, uh, in a future video, we'll talk about the difference between a virtual assistant and a freelancer, because I do think it's important to make that distinction. But at the beginning, you'll probably only outsource for like specific tasks, like your, your logo and things like that. And then you might hire a virtual assistant down the road to help with ongoing tasks, like maybe managing your TPT store, like responding to Q and A, responding to comments, uploading products, uh, optimizing listings, things like that. Anyway, it was great to have you here. I hope you learned a ton. If you found this video valuable by, hi, by the way, my name is Brittany Verlenich. I'm a content strategist, social media marketer, and community manager. You are welcome to click the like on the video. It helps me out as well as subscribe if you'd like to see more future content and click a little bell if you do so that you never miss notification of a new video. I will see you soon.